name is Deacon Bob Perino. He's been ordained since, since 2003. And I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Help us, Lord, to be masters of ourselves, that we may become the servants of others, take our lips and speak through them, our minds and think through them, and take our hearts and set them on fire. The history of every civilization, every society, every church, every congregation includes endings and beginnings. Sometimes endings are anticipated, sometimes unanticipated, sometimes eagerly awaited. Our lives are full of endings and beginnings. Now part of my life is ending and beginning. My ministry as a deacon at St. Mark's Church in Palm Beach Gardens is over. I sense God is calling me to be here at St. George's. I hope and pray that this is the be beginning of a new ministry for me. I ask and need your prayers that I am able to do the Lord's work here. Isaiah answered God's call, and he said, Here I am, Lord. I lift up my heart and say, Here I am, Lord. The history of the people of Israel, which St. Paul knew and loved as a young man, it was like a story in search of an ending. When God raised Jesus from the dead, that ending was now revealed. This is what Israel's history was all about. The Gospels, the good news of Jesus Christ, continue that history. <clears throat> that Jesus' ministry and his resurrection are the ending that God promised and the beginning that now fulfills that promise. In the reading from Paul's letter to the Corinthians, we learn that they had a problem with Jesus' resurrection. So Paul tries them to get to understand where they fit and who they are in God's story. The recently baptized Corinthians were in danger of forgetting that they now belong to Jesus who brought Israel's long history to its fulfillment in his climactic resurrection. They must now live within this story. If they belong to Jesus Christ, it is their story. We too must live within this story. We too belong to Jesus Christ. It is our story as well. This is what we preach. This is what we believe. Do you believe you belong to Jesus Christ? Yes. Do you? Yes. Amen. Paul makes it clear that Jesus' resurrection is rock bottom reality for us. It wasn't some strange story he dreamed up. Jesus' resurrection was proclaimed by all the apostles and disciples. And by the time the Corinthians letter was written, about 30 years after Christ, it had become the Christian's carefully guarded tradition. St. Paul writes, The tradition I handed on to you in the first place, a tradition which I had myself received, was that Christ died for our sins, that he was buried, that on the third day he raised, was raised to life, that he appeared to Cephas, and later to the Twelve, and next he appeared to more than 500 brothers at the same time. Then he appeared to James, and then to all the apostles, and last of all, he appeared to me. The only point in being a Christian at all is that this tradition continues to be the solid ground on faith on which we stand. Do you believe that Jesus was anointed by God as the Messiah? That he died and was buried and then raised to new life? Yes. Yes. Amen. If you do, through God's power, you are touched by God's Holy Spirit and brought into living knowledge and love of God, into the rule of the Messiah, living within the kingdom of God. This is the reality by which we live. Because of Jesus Christ, Son of God, yes, yet truly human, one of us, we now have entrance into God's kingdom, sharing God's life here and now, and entrance into eternal life. 
Dame Julian in the 14th century wrote, some of us believe that God is all powerful and that he is all wise. But as for believing he is all love, then we hold back. Nothing hinders more than the failure to understand this, that God is all love. This living knowledge, this knowing God, is like the intimate relationship of lovers, loving with no bounds, loving with no expectations, loving only because we know God loves us, and therefore we are lovable. Many times, being only human, we put our trust and hope only in ourselves. Sure, we all have our own gifts and strengths, but we cannot save ourselves. We cannot raise ourselves from what kills that spark of divine life in our souls. If we become self-centered and not God-centered, we are really denying God's life in us. We know only resurrection in Christ. Our lives and love and completion are only in Christ. Our response to God's gift of His Holy Spirit brings us to a new life, a life with all the possibilities of transformation, a life that can grow into the knowledge and love of God. We are like the prophet Isaiah. In his vision, an angel touches his lips with a burning coal. Isaiah hears the angel's voice. Your guilt has been removed. Your sin is forgiven. God's love in our hearts is like this burning coal. The Lord asks us, whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Will you answer, here I am, Lord. Send me. Here I am, Lord. Send me. Mother Teresa answered God's call and was sent to the poor of Calcutta, India. She wrote a poem now engraved on the wall of her home for children in Calcutta. Here are parts of that poem. People are often unreasonable, illogical, and self-centered. Forgive them anyway. If you are kind, people may accuse you of selfish, ulterior motives. Be kind anyway. The good you do today, people will often forget tomorrow. Do good anyway. Give the, give the world your best and it may never be enough. Give the world your best anyway. You see, in the final analysis, it is between you and God. It was never between you and them. Anyway. anyway. Thank you, Mother Teresa. Jesus pronounces God's blessing on us and demands a reordering of our lives. God, in blessing us, says, How wonderful you are, my children. How wonderful your gifts, your abilities, your compassion, your love, your future with me. In God's blessing, there is the voice of love and hopeful expectation for all his children, no matter their condition or humble position in society. In God's blessing, there is the promise of eternal life in God's kingdom. God's love instills in us the power of blessing and of being blessed. In our everyday struggles and strivings, we can lift up and bring hope and joy when we pronounce God's blessing on family, on friends, and on each other. And as the psalmist said, you read this morning, I will give you thanks to you, Lord, with my whole heart. I will sing your praise because of your love and faithfulness. O oh Lord, your love endures forever. Amen. Amen.